everyone, welcome back to the festival circuit. My name is Adam Nixon and I'm joined by Ruben. Hi guys. And today we are going to be looking at the Reading Festival lineup once again, but we're going to be ignoring the headliners, ignoring the subheadliners, and we're going to dive straight into all of the rest of the acts that are on the main stage, a bit lower down, and all of the side stages. Okay, so we're going to be jumping straight into the Friday, and the first name that stood out to me that is not headlining or subheadlining is Declan McKenna. He has two albums out at the moment. His most recent one being Zero. He's got some great songs, and for the age he's at, he's doing really well, and I'm looking forward to seeing him. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, Declan McKenna take to the main stage. Um, he's playing quite a high slot as well. Um, he obviously yeah. was going to be playing um, Reading 2020, um, and then has obviously come back now um, and uh, heading up, you know, on the, he's on the main stage, you know, Wallows and the Most Act, and then it goes into Declan McKenna. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the sort of show that he can put on because I've seen his um, Glastonbury performance from 2019 and mm -hmm. he seems to be a real showman, he seems to put on a really, really good show. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he sort of reminds me in the same sort of bandwagon as sort of like Sam Fender and yeah, sure. I, th I think he's definitely going to be great to watch and I'm really looking forward to him. I think some of his songs have been almost like at the age he's at, it's crazy. Like he's almost got like these anthems that everyone knows the song, and um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. And again, from the 2020 lineup, he's had that little bit of an upgrade where we've got two main stages. He's seeing himself on the main stage as opposed to the Radio One stage. So yeah, I think it's going to be brilliant. I think it's the right slot for him, and I got no complaints there. Yeah, and, and talking about Wallows, uh, I'm really, really looking looking forward to seeing them. You know, they've got their one album. One album out, nothing happens. That came out 2019. Um, I've not actually seen them before, and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing them. They've obviously got the the, the fan favorite, Are You Bored Yet? That I think really mm -hmm. took off um, on TikTok. I think during uh, during the first lockdown. Um, but yeah, the Wallows are a band that I followed um, for a while now, and there's one that <clears throat> I've always wanted to go and see, um, but never had the chance. Uh, so, so I think seeing them at, at, at Reading and Leeds. Um, it's going to be a really good way to introduce me uh, to them and just kind of see how they perform. It's, it's going to, it, by the looks of it, they'll be opening under nothing but thieves. Who obviously, have been announced to be to be opening. Yeah. Uh, but but Wallows after them, I think that'll be um, that'll be a great little uh, duo. Those two. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, for me, like I think Wallows are one of those bands that you know me and Ru me and Ruben have had chats and we've been talking about who I should get get into and things like that and Wallow is probably definitely one of those names that have come up of a band that I probably wasn't too familiar with so yeah I am looking forward to seeing them I think it's a good slot for them especially after as you say after Nothing But Thieves is quite quite sensible going into and depending on how they do it with Spit in the main stages I think that could work, could work really really well the next band I've really got into sort of recently is Seagulls. They are a British band and they have their one album which is Open Up Your Head. And a lot of the big singles is like All I Want To Hear You Say, Call Me Out. And yeah, I've got, got really into them, especially over sort of like this last lockdown. I think I got introduced to them through sort of like my university course as other people would listen to them. So... Yeah, I was glad to see them get announced. I did think they were going to get announced. I think we predicted it a little while ago. Just because they're the sort of band that people are going to love. They're almost a bit dark fruitsy. They're almost a bit, you know, just that little bit indie that I think a lot of people are going to get behind and watch, even if they haven't heard, the, heard them before. I mean, we've got Sam Fender on that day. We've got Catfish on that day. So, yeah, I think it really works really well, and I understand the slot they've got. Yeah, no, it really fits that vibe for the uh, for the main stage West. Is it West? Mm -hmm. Is this the West in there yeah, on, on yeah. the Friday? Um, Catfish, Sam Fender, and then Sea Girls. You got sports team as well. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure a few more will, um, will get added. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it just really, really fits the vibe there. Sea Girls. I, I don't think you can really hate them. To be honest, they just kind of make no. feel good music. Um, just something that's easy to listen to. Um, again, there's a band I've wanted to see and haven't. Um, so I think again, Reading and Leeds is a great place to, to to see them. You know, they've got really. They've got good songs that, that people just like Damage Done, Call Me Out. I, I, they're songs that yeah, I really like yeah. Um, yeah. that are a playlist for me. Um, but yeah, no, I'm looking looking forward to seeing Seagulls. Yeah, definitely. I'm, um, I think they'd be really good. And I just 
I just think that they are perfect for the festival and they've been announced for a lot of festivals a lot over this year so probably one of those acts that we're just going to see rise and rise and rise hopefully oh yeah for sure and and and, and the band just before them sports team they're probably one of my favorite bands um at, yeah absolutely love sports team uh, and I, I think that they are going to be it wouldn't surprise me if they if they headline the festival in five, six, seven, eight years time or have a have me long like they're just they're a they're a group of friends uh, from Cambridge University um, and they came together uh, um, and started this band and they've obviously had the, the debut album Deep Down Happy that absolutely exploded it was like a number one album um, and was really 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 popular um, last year they've got songs you know, M five um Stanton they've got loads of songs that came out before um when they were because they've obviously played they've played Reading and Leeds before um 2019 they were on the Festival Republic stage um and and then they've obviously got um Happy God's Own Country that came out recently so they're obviously making new music and hopefully um by the time August comes around uh, they'll have a couple of more songs um, that we can listen to but yeah sports team are, are really really one I think if people haven't listened to them I think you've probably been living under a rock but you also you should also definitely go to the main stage and catch them um, Alex Rice the lead singer is such a charismatic like front man um, yeah I just think he's a sports team are one for, for everyone to watch am I right in saying as well that you you found them through a Reading and Leeds before that's how you found them wasn't it yeah, yeah, I found them through um, through that 2019 um, Reading, and then, I think it was 2018. I wasn't there, but they played the BBC introducing stage, so they really yeah. have had a massive, yeah, that's a huge jump, m- massive jump from the introducing to Festival Republic, and now, um, up and three to the main years stage. as well. It's not bad, yeah. especially with um, and no 2020 either. So yeah, almost yeah. two years. Well, no, they yeah. were. I think was it 2020? I think they were going to be. Headlining the re- the Festival Republic. Ah, oh, yeah. So they were they were going to be play. They were definitely going to be there 2020. Um, that would have been a good set as well, headlining it. Yeah, but on the main stage, I am really really looking forward yeah, to seeing. Yeah, you can't them. complain, can you? Right, and the next band that I'm really really looking forward to seeing um, is Gallows. They're going to be headlining the pit, uh, the the lock up, uh, uh, and who who doesn't love a bit of proper hardcore rock. This is um, <laughs> Frank, Car- Frank Carter's old band. Uh, his brother's still in the band. I think he's the guitarist. Oh, um, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm just like, I'm really looking forward to, to, to seeing to seeing them. Um, I'm, I don't listen to them. They're, they're not on my playlist that much. I don't really listen to them that often. But when you're at a festival like that, seeing a proper rock band like that in Gallows... Um, uh, it is something I'm really looking forward to, and just before them, into sort of Boston Manor, into Gallows. Boston Manor are also they're an English rock band, um, fan favourites, so, aren't they? Boston exactly. Manor. Everyone loves uh, Boston Manor. Well, most people that go to to Red and Leeds love Boston Manor. I think when you're, especially when you're at a festival, obviously the 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 main stage, and you've got your music that everyone loves. But you've also got those the stages that are kind of a bit more tailored to, to people's certain tastes. Mm-hmm. And Gallows and Boston Manor um, are, are ones that are kind of proper like rock. And then you've obviously got the extra stage that have got your know, like your Jack Carlos you get for that day. Yeah. Um, so it kind of you you've got <clears throat> not everyone's going to be going to to the lock up. Um, and I get that, but you know the people that do go there are gonna are gonna have a really good time. Yeah, definitely. And uh, speaking about that stage, we've got Yonaka, which are a couple of slots before those two. And for me, I think they're a great band. If you haven't heard them before, they're they're, they're fronted by a woman, and it's very similar to like sort of your Wolf Alice vibes, but that's slightly more rocky. Rocky. And yeah, I think Yonaka. If you haven't listened to them before, I mean, some songs I'd recommend is like Creature, Teach Me to Fight, Rockstar. They've got some great bands, especially uh, out band bloody hell they got some great songs especially on that first album so yeah i'd 100 percent going to recommend to see yonaka and yeah i think they fit in on that stage very well i mean this year is slightly different because they've had to put certain acts on like the dance stage uh, i think just due to them not having a radio one stage that would play perfectly there so yeah for a band like that that definitely fits the lockup very well and then as 
Ruben said earlier, going on to the one extra stage, headlining that is Jack Harlow on the Friday, and obviously the man behind What's Poppin', one of the biggest songs sort of that's been in the last year. I think a lot of people will be happy to see him there, and I think he'll headline that one extra stage perfectly fine. Yeah, oh, it's a really, really smart booking um, to get Jack Harlow there. A lot of people are going to are gonna be um, itching to see him. And he'll probably, if he's headlining the one extra, it'll kind of be around the um, the, the, the sub-headliner uh, slot on the main stage. So whether that's going to be AJ yes. Tracy or Sam Fender. So they're going to be, you've, you've got your pick there. Um, and then you can obviously go off, off and see your Catfish and, and Stormzy. And yeah, I think most yeah. people will be, uh, be at those two. Um, but yeah, Jack Carlo, I think it's just, again, we're saying it with a lot of these, but it's just feel good, just easy music to listen to. Um, and I've never, I've never actually seen him perform live, uh, not even on YouTube or anything. So I don't know how much of a performer he is, but from what he, what he produces, the songs he's got, I think it'll be hard not to, to really put on a good show. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, so I think we should move on to the Saturday and talk about who else we're looking forward to seeing. Let's do it. Right, and the next artist that we're going to be talking about on the Saturday is um, is Bibi Doobie. She's signed onto the same record label, um, Dirty Hit, as the 1975. Um, and they they found her, discovered her from um, her, the Coffee song that she wrote, uh, a song called Coffee, back in 2017, I think it was. Um, and yeah, she, she she's really um, burst into the scene. She's one of those kind of like, radio fan favourites she gets played a lot and people are listen to her even sometimes without knowing that you're listening to her you're listening to BB Doobie like I was listening to um, to Radio 1 uh, in the car yesterday and BB Doobie came on yeah. um, so so it is just it, she's she's a really really good um, artist like indie rock um, type vibes um, and I, I don't know I don't know about you but I am really looking forward to, to seeing her yeah, definitely. It'd be good to see it'd be interesting to see what she's she's got like, you know, what she's all about, especially live. I think oh, she's got a, quite a big slot there, she's done a cigarette, so that'll probably work quite well. And I think, you know, we've got to mention that it's one of those acts, a bit like the Kid Leroy on the same day. It's TikTok that sort of blew up that song, probably blew her up, maybe less so than the Kid Leroy, but still it still got her in the limelight. She's still releasing new songs now. And I think she's got either an album on the way or a recently released album. And, yeah, I think it would be definitely really interesting to see what she's got sort of live and how she performs, especially a song like Coffee, which is so big. But it's not it's not, it's not a quick song, is it? It's quite slow. So, yeah, yeah it would be definitely interesting to see what she brings. But she's got a decent slot there and it will be definitely good to watch her. And especially with Easy Life just behind. And that is who we're going to be talking about next. Easy Life I've got really into, especially their new album since that's been released, which is Life to a Beach. They've got some great songs on there. And yeah, they're definitely a fan favourite, Easy Life. That's why I wanted to check who they were out. There's quite a few of them in the band, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and yeah, they're just they're they're all mates, they all just chip into the songs and yeah, for me, definitely looking forward to them and they're gonna be very popular this year. Yeah, I think Life's a Beach is only recently come out um within the last m- a month or so i think um and yeah they're just they they've really burst onto the scene and i think they could probably be playing a, a higher slot now yeah i um, agree I, I i think easy life have just been added to the boardmasters lineup a, a couple of weeks ago um and they're playing um playing a, a fairly high slot there so I think next time, next time around, I think we'll be seeing Easy Life um, at Reading and Leeds. Say it could be 2022, and they could be playing a much, much higher slot, kind of where the the Kid Leroy um, potentially yeah, is. I agree. I was, I was thinking the same sort of thing. I think it's going to do the same sort of thing as what like Slow Tie did. It, they're just going to go up quite quickly. No, for so sure. yeah, I uh, definitely think that'd be good to watch, especially. Especially see them progress. Probably one of those bands that, as you said, similar to sports team, probably see headlining one day. For sure, Easy Life are definitely headline contenders in the next um, five, just five years, six years. And uh, yeah, going on to the next day, we have the I think they're American. I could got that wrong, but the American two piece. I don't know how, but they found me or shortened as I don't know how. Uh, these are one of the acts that I actually got recommended to listen to since doing this YouTube thing. 
and I'm so glad I did. I would 100% recommend listening to them. I don't know if you much know much about them, uh, Ruben, but I've been enjoying them recently quite a lot. Yeah, no, I've been listening to them. I think they're yes, I think you're you're right. They're a two piece band um, yeah. from Utah in in America, I think. Yeah. So they're an American two piece, um, and they they just are they just it's just kind of like rock indie pop, like it's it's that sort of vibe. Um, yeah, yeah. And and it's just it's just good good music. Um, yeah. And I think it's I was surprised and and I didn't know who they were. Um, when they first got put, when the lineup first no, got announced, um, and and I've been listening to them, and and my God, I'm glad that that they're going to be here, and I'll definitely, yeah, definitely 100%. be checking them out. And I think a lot of people were saying when they first got announced, it almost it sounded as if it was quite a shock that they got added. So probably quite good to see them on the lineup, and then maybe they don't do too many UK festivals, but it's sort of, sort of out that would fit quite well, probably on the day with Machine Gun Kelly, Youngblood, and Queens even. Uh, yeah, but the same sort of thing. yeah, with Fever 333 free, free and the Hara yeah. um, just yeah. before them, so those kind of three will they go on quite well. well. And then you've yeah. got Becky Hill to kind of switch it up, and then obviously you go into your slow tie and the Wombats and that. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'm definitely I'm so glad I started to listen to them. If you haven't already, go listen to some. Yeah, you know, honestly, start off with the main song. Start off with Choke. Do it all the time, and. Yeah, yeah, and then you'll you'll probably start, slowly start getting into a wormhole of some of their other music. So it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, uh, and then talking about the horror, um, they are obviously they're a t- they're a TikTok band. That uh, I, I say TikTok band, they kind of they obviously started before that, but they've really um, burst onto the scene um, just from co- consistently posting on on TikTok um, and doing their covers. Um, but they have got really good songs themselves, friends. Um, Animals. They've they've got songs that um that they're obviously not a massive band. I think they yeah they've got thirty eight thousand uh, monthly streams on Spotify. So they're they're not a huge band, um, but but for them to come and I think this is the first time I could be wrong, but I think this is the first time they're playing um R and L and they're coming and yeah, playing so. an an o- opening on the on the main stage. So it's it's a big big deal for them, um. But yeah, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to. I'll, I'll check out a bit of the set, um, before, obviously before Fever Free Free Free, and then um, I don't know how. Um, but yeah, the horror. I think they're one to to look out for. There, a lot of people kind of hate on them, and I saw a lot of in the replies when the lineup got announced that the horror were there. Um, people kind of weren't too happy about it. But I think if you listen to the no songs, that, really. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. After after I think it's sixteen months or however long now that we've not had festivals, um, I can't I can't understand as to why you would like for someone like the Hara they're gonna have that little following they, whether they're, it's like a little cult following probably from people who like them on TikTok that sort of thing I mean just let people enjoy the music you know yeah it, it, um, obviously none of us have been to to festivals you know apart no. from the, the, the the download pilot festival that's happening. Um, on Friday, so two days yeah, from now. Weekend. So, so the people that are going to there, the ten thousand that are there, are very, very lucky. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we've not had a festival, and most of us have not had live music. Obviously, bar the um, um, the Stephen Park, pilot. Uh, yeah, yeah, the pilot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so just enjoy the music. You're there. You don't have to go and listen to them, but you don't need to to go and uh, and go on a, a rampage saying why why they shouldn't be there. In my opinion, no. No, I do totally agree, um, and yeah, no, I think any anyone on the lineup is welcome, and if you want to go see them, go bloody see them. You know what I mean? Exactly. So going on to another fan favorite, we're going to talk about the 18-year-old Alfie Templeman. He is a British singer-songwriter who's recently released a new album called Forever Isn't Long Enough, and. I'm going to be honest, I don't know loads about Alfie Templeman. I like some of his music. I just know he's that fan favourite and a lot of people are going to be looking to watch him over on the... I think it's on the Radio 1 dance stage. As I said earlier, there's he'd probably be perfect for the Radio 1 stage, but they're not doing it this year. They've decided he's not quite big enough to go on the main stage, so Alfie Templeman is in the mix on the dance stage. Yeah, I think I think he was on the Festival Republic in 2019. I've I've didn't go and see him, um, and I'm not a, a massive fan. I've not really listened to much of his music. To be fair, and I probably should 
um, should get on that. Uh, but he, as you say, he's a fan favorite. A lot of people like him. Um, so there's no there's no reason why why I shouldn't. So I probably will um, give him a listen, and I probably will end up um, seeing him at R and L. Uh, and at this rate, I'm not going to have any spare time to do anything other than listen to Axe with the oh, okay. <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking at the lineup. There's, there's going to be no time for anything else other than listening to music. No, I do totally agree. And obviously, he's I think he's very got very similar vibes to your sort of like Declan McKenna, Sam Fender, as I said earlier. So yeah, I think he's probably going to be those one of those acts that gets quite in the mainstream, just like they have. So yeah, I suppose we better get on that bandwagon. Yeah, uh, and playing just after him um, is Thomas uh, Thomas Hedden, um, I think is how you say it. Um, he's also another another musician um, that posts consistently on TikTok, uh, and and I scroll um, well I follow him now, but I scrolled across him uh, quite a lot on on the For You page, and he's uh, Australian, I think. Um, and and I think this this will be the first time that he plays R and L as well, um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing him. He's kind of quite quite a chill kind of good vibed type of uh, um type of act um he's doing a uk tour i think in november um and he's kind of just playing he's he's playing a lot of um smaller um smaller um stages yeah venues and that um so in bournemouth so in my hometown he's playing um fire station which is quite a small uh a venue yeah yeah um but yeah, I think that'll be that'll be really good. He's um, he, he's a rising rising talent. I think he's um, really good musician that I think people should check out. Mm, definitely. And you were going to mention Kenny Hoopla as well. Yeah, Kenny Hoopla. I, I know Jack Webb. I think everyone who likes R and L follows Jack Webb um, on the socials yeah, yeah. And, and watches his YouTube. And and he's a massive massive fan of of Kenny Hoopla. And um, I he was obviously he was at Reading uh, and uh, twenty nineteen, and I'd never saw him there, and then it wasn't until after um, when I saw um, Jack Webb's um, vlog um, after R and L um, that he was massively massively excited about going to see Kenny Hoopla and said that it was one of the best um, gigs of that weekend. Um, so that so then after that I went and and listened to to Kenny Hoopla and yeah really really good. Um, act. I think he that again would kind of fits the vibe of um, of of where Machine Gun Kelly and Young Blood and that kind of um, th- that that. So if he was bigger, maybe could have could have gotten to that main stage. But I think um, he fits quite well on the dance stage. I mean, it's not really going to be a dance stage until later on. You know, when you've no, got. Yeah. Um, uh, Sonny Fedora uh, and Danny Howard, Howard and that, yeah, exactly. Um, but kind of earlier on, these are kind of the sort of acts that would be um, on your Festival of Publics um, and your and your Radio Ones. But obviously, on the Saturday, there's your dance stage, the pit, and the one extra. So there is so that they've had to they've had to fit them on on the dance stage, uh, and I don't mind it. I'll, I'll go see them regardless. So. No, of course, it's not going to make any. You still, you're not like, you're not going to have all these acts. Then all of a sudden, it's only going to be people for, who want dance music going to be there. If you want to go see that act, people are going to go and see that act. So it's not going to just feel like that. It might just be a bit of a merged stage this year, as opposed to the same act. And as you mentioned it earlier, we've got the one extra stage and subheadlining in that. Oh, subheadlining that is Tion Wayne. He's one of the biggest UK grime artists this year sort of overtaken streams of the likes of Stormzy and stuff like that just due to him releasing his new music this year obviously had that number one that went on for a while Body and then obviously there was a remix of that and he's just releasing more music I'm quite a big fan of Tion Wayne Uh, I first heard of him in the KSI song which I can't remember Houdini was it Houdini I think it was Uh, so yeah Tion Wayne um looking forward to seeing him I think he was there in 2019 too so yeah I think he'll be popular right and for us uh, a must see on the Sunday <laughs> is Tom, Tom Grennan um, obviously released Evering Road that, um, that this year that is, is an unbelievable uh, album it's great isn't it it's so yeah. good uh, and obviously he's got songs that everyone knows like Found What I've Been Looking For I think everyone everyone knows that song and he's he's obviously he's just he's an act that it's an interesting voice. It's not a voice for everyone, um, 
but he, he's a he's a radio one artist you know what i mean he's always on the radio um and i just think that tom grennan is maybe i've not seen him live and maybe he isn't a festival act but i think um the way he presents himself uh, on stage from what i've seen in videos um he, he's gonna put on quite a good show um and i think he'll just kind of get get people up uh, and dancing and i think any music now um for, for post you know post covid um is, is going to be good music do you know what I mean? I could I could go to any festival um, and enjoy myself. So I think people, if, if if you get yourself down to Tom Grennan, obviously KSI is going to be just before him. That I think a lot of people, especially Adam Mon and yours ages, um, will, will be going to see KSI. So just just stay on after and watch, watch Tom yeah. Grennan. Oh yeah, you've got to watch Tom Grennan. He's got so many sides. I say found what I've been looking for is one of the older one, but even from ever in everyone road even the one with ella henderson as well all these songs all right some of them may not be festival songs but they're all great songs they're all you know they're becoming they're becoming anthems on the radio they're on all the time so yeah i think a lot of people are going to know a lot more songs than they imagined i mean even is it called our lighting matches his album before that even that was fantastic yeah and I'll, I'll, you know yeah. songs, songs like I'll, royal highness i absolutely love yeah, if only. So that's the first one off ever in road. I can see him coming out to that song, yes. and that's one yeah. that people are going to get up and, and and dance to. So, yeah, definitely. And just before him, as we mentioned earlier, is YouTuber turned boxer turned singer in <laughs> KSI. I, I still find it funny that we're talking about KSI on the main stage at Reading and Leeds when we spoke about all these different acts that haven't even made it to the main stage. He was meant to be very low down on the One Extra stage in 2020 and has now jumped to one, two, three, four, fifth act from the top. So, yeah, it's going to be definitely interesting watching KSI, obviously. Don't get me wrong, his new album, his new songs for his new album have been pretty good, I must admit. I think a lot of people are quite surprised how he's doing. He's got a single to release uh, this week and that's just him, no features. So it'll be interesting to see how he carries himself on that. He's very versatile, and I think a lot more people are going to be interested in seeing him than others think. Yeah, I think I I will. I'm I'm not into that that, that type of music, um, but just because I've kind of grown up watching KSI from like year year twelve, uh, from from sorry from um twenty twelve, um so year seven, uh, for me kind of growing up and just watching him playing you know FIFA twelve FIFA thirteen. Uh, and now you know, and then he went into boxing, um, did well there, and now now he's um, gone into rapping and he's done really well as well. Yeah. So I think no, I will. You can't, you can't fault the guy, can you? No, nah. no, he's he's an entrepreneur and he's he's talented. You give him that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not a massive fan of of that type of music. But I will just go and see him for for the nostalgia of, of anything yeah yeah of course and just before him actually i've completely forgot to even write them down is the hunter where i think we're both a big fan of the hunter i think they can sure. be a little bit they're, they're a bit i mean you know what they're like they're a bit cringy but they're they're a great band they make some great music especially that album uh what's it called the 100 or 100 that album is fantastic 100, probably yeah. my favorite album out of all the ones they have yeah, and for sure. they've definitely got some absolute bangers on that album that a lot of people will be happy to see i've seen them once before but it was quite a small crowd and it was at a local festival so that's probably why they'll probably be a bit bigger when we go see them in reading and leeds and they'll probably have quite a bigger crowd because there's people coming from all over the place to watch them yeah i think you know songs that I, everyone knows like bonfire and she's casual um, but yeah, songs yeah. like You and Me, We Could Be, Piece by Piece, they're just off of 100, obviously, that came out in 2016. They've got they've got a lot of good songs. Um, they've released, I think they've got a new album or they've released a few singles um, yes. um, for, for this year. So so hopefully there's some new music um, from The Hunter as well. They, they've got a tour, I think, in October or November time. Um, so yeah, I, I think... Hannah are, are one of those Marmite bands. You either love them or you hate them. Um, I agree. Yeah. Which, whichever way you sit, oh, I think they're a good band. Right, and the next one on the main stage west is, is that I'm really looking forward to seeing is Denzel Curry. Um, I saw him at Wireless 2018 or 19. I can't, I can't remember which one it was. Um, but he is just—he's going to be 
it's going to be mental. If you want to go uh, for mosh pits um, and just go and have a really, really good time, that half an hour set or however long it gets is just going to be absolute carnage. You know, he's got songs like <laughs> Clout, Clout, Clout Cobain and Ultimate, Tokyo Drifting. There's so many songs that are just... Oh, Tokyo Drifting's good. Yeah. Like, he's just... He's got so much energy, such a stage presence. He's one of my best mates, his, his favourite artist. Um, and yeah, I I'll just say think... He's one of your best mates then. <laughs> I wish. But... Um, but yeah, no, Denzel Curry, if, if you're there, you know, you want to have a good time, mosh pits, and just get in amongst it after after however, what it'd be kind of 18 months, I guess, um, since yeah, going to yeah. a festival last. I, I think Denzel Curry has got to be one that people have got to check out. Yeah, see, for me, for Denzel Curry, I mean, it's one of those acts that I've tried to get myself into, but he's got so many songs. Like, he's got so many songs and albums with other people and stuff. It's like, I don't know where to start. So yeah. I might have to have, just have a look at some of his literally most streamed ones and just go from there. But Okay, well, I was just going to say, he's not one of those... When I first saw him um, at Wireless, I didn't really know many of his songs, to be honest. But you go, and uh, you don't really need to know many of his songs, just like the energy. Um, I guess it was kind of like um, when I first when I saw Frank Carter. Um, you just, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know of him, really. Um, but, but you go, and the energy... And, and then you're hooked from there. And then, I, I, I mean, that's my opinion on, on Denzel Curry. And headlining the Festival Republic stage on the Sunday is Girl in Red. Again, one of those acts that I found through a Reading sort of automatically made playlist on Spotify. It was when, because she was in the first announcement. So, you know, when there was only about 10 acts on the lineup, 20 acts. So, yeah, I listened to Girl in Red, really liked some of the songs, especially... Um, want to be your girlfriend new song serotonin obviously she's released that new album that she got shared by some massive massive artists like taylor swift being shared by all those and i think she's definitely gonna get quite big and again she's headlining that stage on the day where the whole stage is filled with women artists yeah so um yeah i'm really looking forward um uh, for that one and then you, you know you've also got like blocks that are going to be there baby queen there's there's a lot there's obviously as you said there's um female artists that are going to be obviously they're not all female there's there's as bands like blocks with with females in them um but yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to to seeing what they're doing with the festival public because obviously they're trying to be a bit more inclusive i think that was a a big criticism uh, um of r and l especially when they first just just the announced that the headliners the six headliners people thought like oh, come on Melvin Ben, mate, you could have put at least one woman, yeah, um, you know, up there because you know we've had like we've had Paramore. Um, who else have we had? There, there's reckon, not been that many. I reckon next year we're gonna see at least. I reckon we'll see probably two. I'm talking sort of like I think Billie Eilish is almost nailed on. Gonna happen. Yeah. I think maybe. I mean, you could see someone like Dua Lipa. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd be really happy about um, Billie Eilish. Dua Lipa is yeah, obviously big enough to do it, um, but but whether they they go for it or not, I don't know. Might be a um, bit too poppy for them. Yeah, for 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 a headliner maybe. Um, but yeah, there should definitely be. I I think we should hold um, Festival Republic uh, accountable um, if um, if if there's no women headlining next year. Yeah, definitely, and they'll probably know that they, especially if they carry on with the six headliners, they'll probably know they're messed up if they don't. <laughs> oh, for but, sure. I, I think there's there's not even an argument to be made for if they have three headliners because there should still be women. Obviously, there's there's bands with women that are obviously big enough. Yeah, you've got like, like you've got old bands. You've got Paramours, and you've got Florence and the Machine. She's Florence not like machine. she's 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 not headline yeah. headlined, and she obviously she definitely could. And then you've obviously got uh, other bands. Um, that, that are coming through like you all fallacies uh, and Fallis, that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I th- I think with with with, with six headliners, you've got to have someone, whether it's Billie Eilish or Florence or whatever. I, That's I think the thing. Out of out of eighteen, out of eighteen of their headliners, sub headliners, there's one female only act, and the other one is only a female fronted band. Yeah. 
it, Sorry, and there. It's, no, no. Yeah, it's, no, it's not yeah, really, no. it's not good. And, yeah, I mean, just to sort of finish up, I mean, I've got a couple of names written down. I've got Nico B. Obviously, he's quite a fun artist on the and perfect for the dance stage. I think, you know, like, who's that, what's that, Mary Berry. I think a lot of people will be there. I think he'll bring a lot of energy to the crowd, and I think he'll be... That tent will be full of energy that in that set. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, only sort of other acts. I've got a couple of the... I've got one of the acts named on one extra, Digger D. He's got quite big ever since his most recent album that came out this year, which is called, like, Made in Pyrex or something like that. And some songs that I was quite surprised about or that were popular. Obviously, he has a song with AJ Tracy. That's probably one of the reasons that that song blew up. So, yeah, they've got a lot of variety, depending on what you're into. Well, swarms but they're sort as well. Of the I think, yeah, swarms, swar- yeah, swarms yeah. with K- Keisha Becky that... That he's yeah, on, I yeah, hundred percent. Everyone, everyone loves that song. So obviously, yeah. you know, we, we've gone through a lot of the these artists, and, and we could be talking for hours about all of the. Oh, yeah, uh, we've missed, the we missed quite a few. I mean, we didn't, we didn't mention really nothing but thieves. I saw someone earlier who we didn't mention. Uh, you know, even we haven't really mentioned any of the DJs. To be fair, no. So yeah, there's so much for other people, and I think if we haven't, if we miss people out, it's just because there are so many acts, and it's just the lineup's just going to get bigger. Oh, for sure. It's going to get even bigger. It's going to get even better. And I am bloody looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I'm hoping for an announcement this month. I think it could happen. Uh, I think, to be fair, they were probably banking on the June 21st for an, another announcement. But we'll have to see about that. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that sort of sums up our quick breakdown of this sort of lineup. I think next week, did we say we might go on to a different, or the next podcast might go on to a different festival or speak about a couple of festivals? Yeah, I reckon it'll be a good time. We'll, we'll be able to to talk about the the download pilot. And, and yeah, how that yeah. Went. Sort of debrief that. Yeah, yeah. We'll debrief that uh, uh, and talk about how amazing the Frank Carter set was because I'm I know it's going to be cracking. <laughs> why don't you do what uh, Why don't you do what they did in the game yesterday and just parachute yourself in? <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I, I get there somehow. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll talk about some other festivals and uh, and I guess we can talk about the lockdown as well and, and see because uh, a lot of festivals have kind of been put, been put up in the air a little bit and why not uh, and truck and some of those festivals are kind of really really getting squeezed by it moving to the 19th of July rather than the 21st so of June are they, so are they taking place like last weekend of July yeah so yeah so, so a lot of the festivals <laughs> that are uh, and Latitude as well I think it's in, in the last week or maybe the first week of August um, but yeah so, so, so those festivals that are happening in July are really really getting pressed because obviously they're not getting insurance so no one knows what's going to happen there's going to be no guarantees um, yeah so yeah, yeah. I saw they put up a statement, didn't they, Latitude, and just said basically it's still going to go ahead. But we just said it's they said it's just so close. But well, yeah, it's, it's going to be it's interesting. Festival public in it, they can Melvin Ben. He's got like they've got enough money. They can they you know, do the tests and that. But I guess uh, yeah, you feel yeah. for the smaller um, festivals. Why not? Uh, yeah, that. exactly. So yeah, we'll be we'll be back on the second of July talking about that, and that will I mean it will only be a couple of weeks until the lockdown's lifted, hopefully, after the delay. But yeah, so I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Again, make sure you're streaming this on it's on it should be on all platforms now, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, so whatever you fancy it on. Thanks for listening, and yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, cheers for tuning in guys and uh, we'll see you next time